Good morning, Year 6, and welcome to Wednesday, the 20th of January's literacy lesson. So, today's lesson, you will need this sheet here and the picture sheet. And first things first, just open your book and at the top of a new page, write Wednesday, the 20th of January, 2021, and the learning objective to plan. You don't need to write any SPAG today because we're not going to do SPAG today because this might take a while with planning. Okay, so pause the video while you do that. Right, so let's get straight on with it. So our purpose for today's lesson, um, as it has been for the last two weeks, is to start to learn to write in a style that when me, Miss Frost or Miss Wallace read it, it gives us goosebumps and leaves us wanting to read more. And our outcome is going to be a suspense story in response to the Titanium video. OK, so our learning objective today is to plan. So just ignore that because that's the wrong one. Um, but this one here. So we're going to use uh, the right planning grid today. Now I'm going to give you the choice that I'll come over later, uh, that I'll go over later, but you need to choose the one that suits you. Um, writing short bullet point sentences briefly explains what happens in each part of the story, include character feelings for each part of the story as well, and then the challenge today is to add in clues to the boy's powers without revealing that the boy is actually supernatural. OK, so we don't want to use any words like blast or, you know, I was powerful or my, you know, we want to do that show not tell, but also drop in little clues along the way. And our plan will help us do that. So basically, you've got all these pictures, which are stills from the video. So just a reminder that you read down, not across. And you can see it's split up into five different sections. Um, and that's what we're going to be planning on today. Now, if you have access to scissors and glue, you can make quite a nice little story map out of these um, or salad tape or whatever. Um, so it might be uh, wor might be worth getting your scissors and glue out at this point. Uh, if not, you can just stick to bullet points and so on. Uh, so I've already briefly gone over what we need to include, but here they are again in case you missed them. Right, so I'm going to model for you a story map because I feel like you've got the pictures. I definitely feel like you should have a go at cutting these out and making a story map out of them. Uh, so the first one here, and really what you're looking at, these three, they might not always be necessary for each one. So I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. I'm just going to reduce my font size. So I'm just going to put the boy and that's how I'm going to refer to him all the way through. I'm not going to give him a name. I'm just going to call him the boy because that gives him an element of mystery. Like, well, who is he? So we're already starting the reader off with a question. OK, so the boy wakes up in a destroyed school corridor. And now I'm going to put in this part a clue. His fingers were still tingling. Now that's a clue because, I'll tell you why it's a clue, um, because this boy is powerful, he's supernatural, he's caused all this destruction, okay? Um, and we want to slowly drop in clues all the way through our writing without actually saying that he's the one who caused it until the very last sentence. Um, when he, you know, he, he does the exact same thing, but to all the policemen surrounding him. But we obviously know this, and as an author, we know this as well. But we want the audience, so our readers, to not know this until right at the last minute. That way, it'll be um, full of suspense. Okay, so that's my little clue there. His fingers were still tingling, and he's got memory loss. He's got memory loss. And I said I'd do these in bullet points, didn't I? Because I'm on here. So he's got memory loss. I'm just going to move that one down here. And so the boy wakes up in a destroyed school corridor. Let's just move you back up there. His fingers are still tingling. He's got memory loss. Now, I haven't mentioned feelings because I think in this next one, uh, that's where I'm going to elaborate on his feelings. He looks up and sees the mess. He starts to panic. He starts to panic. 
and then I'm going to specifically put it's happened again and I might put that as dialogue because he could he could say that now that might be dialogue slash clue so he could um in I mean in mine he might just say out loud oh no not again and that is giving us a big clue well we're, we're not saying what's happened we're just saying not again so it shows that it's happened before okay so the next one now this is the part with the teacher so quick description the boy walks out of the corridor and hears a voice so we could put dialogue in here teacher on the phone so she could say something like you must come quickly and at this point as well another clue might be teacher sees the boy and is scared boy sees the teacher and panics leaving quickly okay so there you could you that's definitely i'm just going to delete this one that's definitely opening up for show not tell that bit so that's why we want to include the feelings so when we look when we actually start our writing tomorrow we can really zone in on using those show not tell writing techniques okay uh, right so the other the other, that's that's uh, one way that you could uh, do your plan of course if you just want to do your plan just by looking at the pictures you could just label pictures so for example uh, that's if you don't have glue that could just be picture number one picture number two picture number three and you could do your plan like this in your book so instead of the picture you could just do number one number two and number three like that um but make sure when you're writing your book that you leave that line between each one so it's easier for you to read okay um i'd love you to do a story map but i know it's not everybody's cup of tea now some of you will have this in your book so if you've got this in your book feel free to use this instead and just do it directly on the sheet uh, you can stick it into your book afterwards if you feel like it. Um, or, you know, for anyone else, it, you could do it in the same style of that. Um, but if you have this, I just want you to stick to what happens and character feelings for show, not tell. So you don't have to worry about clues and dialogue. Uh, everyone else, if you haven't got this, I want you to include all of these description a description of the picture feelings clues and dialogue and just remember clues dialogue and feelings don't have to go in each picture okay um, but if you're finding that you've gone five pictures without doing any of them then you probably need to look at it and uh, think about where you can put those in okay right so tomorrow uh, you definitely 100% need this done today it might take a while uh, but tomorrow we're going to start writing okay I'm looking forward to it all right see you tomorrow year six